Why is there never enough time in the day? Let us try and do this. So I ended up putting a little bit of water and I may have put a tiny bit too much. Mmm, tastes good. I think I need some more of these little white chocolates. We'll save a couple for decorations or something else. I am that way. I don't use all my stuff up just because I have it. We're doing a marathon. Nothing can get, nothing gets done. Ugh. Too much stuff, man. Melt. And then when it cools, it'll be nice and hard. Well, not too hard because I put a little bit of water and butter. So I'm just going to make sure it's well incorporated. Oh, I'm not drinking that beer quick enough. I'm sobering up. Not that I had a buzz on to start with, but let me put this in here. Don't press too hard because then you'll break the top layer of the cake. tiny bit of decorative sprinkles. Which one do we have here? Look at these ones.
like that. Just enough. Nice. Looks pretty. Look, guys. We'll stick that in the fridge for a bit. Oh, it looks nice. Look. Does it look pretty? Sparkly. Carrot banana cake with yummy white chocolate and delicious, beautiful sprinkles. Mmm, my mouth is watering. My mouth is watering. Now, let's put this cover back on and put it in the fridge. Let it get cold. And then when we're done our beer, we can have a slice with some tea later. Hello, Mark Mukbang. Hey, welcome back. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Let's put this in the fridge so it gets cold, so the icing can get nice and hard on it. Oh God, the damn kitchen's a mess already. Ah, thank you, thank you. I'm just going to rinse my hands a bit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mukbang! Oh. Let me turn this light off. I'm gonna set my camera up on this side. So the lighting isn't as bad. How are you? How are you? <clears throat> thank you, thank you for bringing your blessings, Mukbang. Where's my pillow now? Let me get comfortable. Look at that. School! Oh, my hip hurts from being on the floor like that. Ugh. Messy, messy, messy. I feel like I want to put some more curl in my hair. It's all getting straight. Might as well finish it off. There's quite a bit left, actually. Well, not a, quite a bit, but there's two thir uh, one third left.
just change the look up a bit. <coughs> sure makes a difference when I don't sit on my blanket. Hold on. on here. Mm. Now, oh, they're over here. Is that going to fall again? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Please make sure to press like if you haven't already. Oh, those potatoes were good. I'm going to have to cover that and eat it later or tomorrow. I shouldn't have put the gravy on top. Compliments to the chef. <sighs> These pants are so weird. They're so tight at the bottom ish, but the top is very loose. They fit me just perfect when I first bought them. Ah, oh, are you acting up again? I always blame it on the ghost when the phone starts acting up. Did I drink that last sip already? Ay, ay, ay. Thing I hate about when my when my uh, hair is down when I smoke a cigarette this the cigarettes uh, smoke goes right into my hair that's another reason I don't wear my hair down much and plus the bottom is just thinning out so much so I'm trying to get it to just grow so I can trim it eventually. Whoa, I almost just ashed into my shooter glass. School! We're having German beer. which I want to drink quickly because I'm not used to that flavor. I almost have to curl my hair and put it in rollers before I go to sleep. I've realized the best way to do my hair is to put the rollers right in the front. And then when I brush it back, it looks nice and wavy. That's what happened. Oops, did I almost ash on you? <laughs> uh, I missed that. Ow! I just scratched myself. What did you say? 
Do you think it's a male ghost or a female ghost? It feels like a female ghost. I've had experience with ghosts in the past and uh, you just si sort of get that sense. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I just get that feeling. Like one time, many, many years ago, back around, gosh, 30 years-ish ago, I was in uh, the Netherlands, in uh, Ireland. I think it was in Ireland. Wherever uh, the, Saint, the Fitzpatrick uh, Castle. And one part of the castle, they turned it into, or I guess at some point, they turned it into a motel. A hotel, motel. Well, I don't even want to get into the big long story, but I felt a child, it seemed like a female ghost, touch, like try and touch me just like you see in the movies and it went through my body but I at the same time kind of felt it as though she was trying to get up on the bed. So that's why I had the sensation that it was a child. Uh, another time I had a sensation that there was a male who was aggressive and uh, he actually kept trying to like push me down the stairs. I always had this feeling like something was behind me or side to me and then I'd almost feel like I was going down the stairs too fast. But yeah, why do you ask, um, Mud Max? Do you, have you ever had that experience with the poltergeist or ghost? And then I have another experience which you call the greys. I call them the greys, where they actually look grey, like a, like you actually see something. You see a grey like a shadow but it doesn't look like a shadow it's denser if that makes sense i've seen that i had that back in manitoba winnipeg manitoba it was supposedly uh, the um a lot of the natives died there or it's burial grounds for the natives something along that line some part of uh, manitoba I was in Winnipeg myself when that, that happened, that situation. Mud Max, why are you not continuing the conversation? Why do you ask? Do you think that it's crazy to say that? Oh my God, guys, I'm so tired. I'm glad I put that cake back in the fridge, but oh, it's got it. I hope it does. It's like going on day two or three that I haven't since I made it. And I said I made it from scratch. I mixed the box and then I put shite in it and then it just changes the, <laughs> the mixture. Let's have another. Ooh, we only have a couple more glasses left. Shooter glasses, that is. Ah, oh, pourquoi? Je veux que je veux maybe feel. Oh, and the other thing, you asked um, Mad Max. Sorry, I said Mad Max. I'm very sorry. I can't see. Mad Max, you had asked if it's a male or a female ghost. The other thing about it is that it's a French ghost. Yep, I feel like it's a French ghost. I think that it's a lingering ghost. Oh. Who's ever tried this beer before? Do you like this kind of beer? Like, 
I wish there was a way. It, it just says imported strong beer. Wiesen dop, uh, Doppelbach. Do, Doppelbach. Who's tried this before? Aventinos. Aventinos. I'm thinking this would taste good like with um, German sausage or sausage. I know it sounds ironic. It did taste good with the with the liver. But I think more salt, like a salty substance like pork, uh, I meant um, ham or something along that line would have been a better pair for this, for my, for this beer. Ow, my back. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Lie down for a second. Oh my goodness. I keep my heels up. Oh, my back. Oh. Take some weight off my spine. See why I don't drink a lot? If I drink too much, oh. Like this beer, let me see. 8.2%. No wonder I'm getting a buzz. Uh. Uh. That's why I like having a drink with my meal. Like back, if you've ever traveled, oof, where are you? Ow. If you've ever traveled, um, I went to Spain at one point, and in Spain they have siestas. Everything gets going so early in the morning. People are banging and construction going, and the beeping, uh, whistling because they don't have lights like you hear, have here for uh, people to, to go and stop from one direction to the other. They have a person with a whistle and then so they just stand in the middle and they direct the traffic. So again, in Spain, everything in the area I was in, it was called uh, Andorra La Vella. Uh, when I was in Andorra, um, like I said, everything got woke. Everybody woke up so early, started working early, and then around I think was it towards two. I forget what time it was between. I think it was around two o'clock, between two and four or five. People would just go and like out of the work. Everybody would stop working and have a siesta. So I had gotten in the habit back at that time to have a drink at lunch. And then go home. Well, at the time I was traveling, so my home was a hotel. Go home and uh, have a rest and and uh, get a break from all the noise. So you almost had to take the siesta along with everybody else because we were so. I personally, because I wasn't used to it, I was like, oh my god, quiet. Oh, and it was so fun because I was there in October, at the very end of October in November that one time. And um, for Halloween, just like you saw in the olden days, or at some point, I don't know but how to describe it, but they um, were over a horn, they were advertising, oh, Halloween, or I don't know what they were saying because I didn't understand the language. Ah! It's getting hot in here again. Let's see what the heck is going on with this down here. Fucking thing's gonna blow up on me. It's at 74 again. Why is it at 74? I know I didn't do that. I swear that boat's messing around again.
Wasn't that weird? What a twinky dink. That's a neighbor that I've seen at the bar. I'm so sorry. I was calling him Mud Maps. I'm sorry. I hope you didn't get insulted by me. I'm so sorry. I might even, because I think I, oh, that's what I might have been confusing. It said Muck Bang. And then I guess I mixed it up with Mud, Mud, oh, sorry. Mud Max. It's Mad Max. Sorry, Mad Max. Ooh, just having the door open just for that little minute sure cooled it down a tiny bit. Ugh, I am not used to this. Oh, shite. It's a tiny bit cloudy at the bottom. Farge, is this that stuff you... Ah, oh, dang, I see some stuff at the bottom. Why don't they have this in English? This was the kind of stuff you're supposed to shake it a bit. I have had something like this in the past, and you're supposed to, there's something at the bottom. Ugh, no wonder it's tasting different. Ow, my back. Ugh. Ooh. But you know, I got a new detergent. It's Tide. It's the same detergent I always use, but yet I feel itchy. Oh, since I, ugh. I was fine. Now all of a sudden I'm itchy again. Ugh, ugh. I should put some cream on. Ugh, it's gonna affect my skin, scratching it like that. Cheers, skull. Last sip. Oh, I can't wait to taste that yogurt uh, soju that I bought. Mmm, what are we going to have tomorrow with that? Please comment, suggest what we will have with the soju. You know, I was actually thinking of making an African, some kind of like hot spicy, because it says yogurt, so make like a, I don't really like um, curry, but make like a sort of spicy, spicy curry type uh, meal tomorrow to go with the soju. You know me, my bastardized meals that I like to make and com uh, combine the different uh, regions. <sighs> I'm gonna save this sip. Not that I liked it that much. Let me turn this uh, thing back. I have to turn it around a minute because I, I don't want you to peek. Oh, car. Oh, let's let you look at this for a moment. Don't fall over anymore. Today. Mm. Mm. There she goes. Ouch. She hip.
I appreciate you watching me and being with me on my live. Thank you, thank you. 1,000, uh, no, wait, how much is it? 1,100 something subscribers and growing. Or I think we're at, actually, I think I'm at, um, what was the number I saw? I think we are at 127, I looked last. Something along that line. Yay. I meant uh, 1127. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, everyone, for supporting me until I get monetized and we figure out other ways how we do this. Thank you for your patience with me. I think I watered this just in time. I hope. I'll put a little bit more water. Ah. Oh. All right. Let's read. Can she read yet?
Mm -mm. Oh. Those shoes stink. Oh, three. The heck. Fuff. It's a combination of like old store smell. Yes, I've been in those type of stores. It's going on here. The century was read, oh gosh, a few days ago now. Fudgemania, I meant, though, uh, was done. Where were we? Dizzy from Izzy. Did I read, read that one? I forget. Oh, okay, no, we didn't read this one yet. Can you see the book? So, this is Judy Bloom, Fudgemania. And we are on chapter 9, Dizzy from Izzy, page 68. Let's see how we're reading, how I'm doing with my reading today. I know it sounds like adolescent, and I will repeat, I do read... Uh, at the level that I can for making sure that I'm understanding it not to be impressing you or myself for that matter I'm just trying to learn again how to read because I find that I've been having or I had a hard time reading last year and I ended up failing in school and the whole year was wasted of sorts but it wasn't it wasn't because I needed to I, I, again, I just didn't want to stay home all winter, but I ended up kind of at home because it, uh, it turned out that everything went online. So, let's continue reading here. Chapter 9, Dizzy from Izzy. I hung out at the beach almost every day on Friday, hoping to catch a glimpse of Big Elf. I guess Mr. Mrs. A finally noticed because she came out on her porch and said, if you're looking for fudge, he's down at the tide pool with Mitzi and Sheila. I'm not looking for him, I explained. I uh, just wanted to ask <clears throat> Big A a question about the game. As soon as I said, Big, I wondered if I should have called him Mr. Alpha instead. But Mrs. A acted as if it was okay. She said, Big's on a fishing trip. He'll be back in a few days. A few days? What about the game on Sunday? I asked. There's no game this Sunday, Mrs. A said. It's an annual antique show. They set it up on the high school field. Antique show? Yes, Mrs. A said. And B gets so upset about the game being cancelled. Sorry, there's a little mite or mitt. I forget what you call them. Anyways, so then uh, he says, 
and V gets upset about the game being canceled. He has to leave town. He gets so upset that it has to be canceled, he has to leave town. But don't worry, he'll be back before next Sunday. Big never misses the ball game. I guess Mrs. A could tell how disappointed I was because she said, I just baked chocolate chip cookies. No, thank you, I said. I'm not very hungry. I, I ran home and announced the bad news. No ball game this Sunday because, the, because of some dumb antique show. I read about it in the local paper, Mom said. I think we should go. Forget it, I told her. You're not getting me anywhere near those stupid antiques. It's good. There's no game, <clears throat> Fudge said, because I still don't have a Mitzi. She looked, looked since Mitchie showed him hers two days ago. Tomorrow afternoon, Dad told him. Promise? Fudge asked. Promise, Dad said. When Mitzi came over the next morning, Fudge said, I'm going to Mitzi this afternoon. That's nice, Mitzi said but she was more interested in books she was carrying than in Fudge's ball game, baseball glove. Did you know I can read, she asked. So can I, Fudge said. Mitzi held up her book and pointed to the title. What does this say? I can't read everything, Judge Fudge said. I can read hot, on pop and dinosaur books. I don't know if he can really read hop on pop or if he's memorized it, but it's true that he knows all the words. The name of his book is the name of this book is Tell Me a Mitsu a Mitsi, she said smiling. Is it Pete? Fudge asked. That's what it says, I told him. Fudge looked surprised. Mitzi opened the book. And it's all about me and my baby brother, Jacob. You don't have a baby brother, Fudge said. I do so. And his name is Jacob. Well, where is he? in Boston with Mommy and Daddy. He's not old enough to visit Grandma and Big by himself. He can't even talk. And he makes poop in his diaper. So does Tootsie, Fudge said. I told him no. I, I, I hold my nose when Jacob gets changed, Mitzi said. I hold my nose when Tootsie gets changed, Fudge said. One time, Jacob got into the diaper, his diaper and played with his poop. Mitzi said, Ah, oh, it was so bad. This conversation is getting pretty bad, I told them. They looked at each other and laughed. Let me see that, that book, Fudge said. Mitzi handed it to him and flipped through the pages. How come it's about you? Because I'm special, Mitzi said. That afternoon, I went to town with Dad and Fudge. The sports store had only one baseball glove small enough to fit him, but he didn't mind. Now I have my own Mitzi, he told the clerk. Yes, the clerk said. I guess you do. And if you put a few drops of oil on the very on it every day, you'll make it nice and soft. 
page 72. A few drops of oil, Fudge repeated, as we left the... No, a few drops of oil, Fudge repeated, as we left the store. He was wearing his glove and kept punching it, his fist into it the way Mitzi had with hers. When Dad told us he had to stop off at Sawyer's Market, Fudge asked if he could go to the library. Sure, Dad said. The library is next door to Sawyer's. From outside, it looks like a little house. There are pots of flowers on the steps and even a screen door. But inside, it's like a regular library. I left Fudge in the children's room and headed for the sports section. There were lots of books about baseball. I was browsing through one that looked interesting when Fudge tugged at my shirt. I can't find it, he said. Find what? The book I want. I figured he was looking for something like your favorite uh, brontosaurus or the last Tyrannosaurus Rex. So I said, go ask the librarian. You come too. I'm busy. Please, Pete, this is important. Oh, all right. I walked into the clerk, uh, to the checkout desk. The regular librarian wasn't there. Instead, there was a girl, maybe 16 or 17. She wore a pin on her shirt that said, Librarian Assistant. She was reading a book. It must have been really good because she didn't even notice we were standing in front of, the, of her until Fudge spoke. Do you have Tell Me a Fudge? He asked. I almost fell through the floor. Pardon? The girl said, looking up at us. Her eyes were a deep dark brown like the best chocolate. Tell me a fudge, he repeated. That's the book I want. It doesn't sound familiar, she said. It could be called Tell Me uh, Farley, Fudge said. I coughed twice, but she didn't even glance my way. Did you look up in the card category, she asked Fudge. No. Fudge, uh, Fudge said, well, let's give it a try. Our computer's down today, she marked her place in the book where she was reading. When she closed it, I tried to read, a, read the title upside down. I think it was called Beginner's Love, but I'm not sure. Fudge followed her to the card category, and I followed Fudge. What's your name? He asked. Isabel, she said, but my friends call me Izzy. Izzy, he said. I like that. What's yours? She asked him. Farley he said, but my friends call me Fudge. Oh, Isabel said. What an interesting name. She summed through the cards in the tr drawer, in the tea drawer. We have Tell Me, <coughs> excuse me, we have Tell Me a Mitzi and Tell Me a, tr a Trudy, but I don't sell I don't see Tell Me Fudge or Tell Me a Farley. 
It has to be there, Fudge said. Isabel went through the cards again. No, sorry. Fudge scrunched up his face. <laughs> Just <laughs> kids. Fudge scrunched up his face and his breath came fast. Oh no, I thought he wouldn't. Not here, not now. But I was wrong. It's not fair, he cried, throwing himself on the floor. Then he kicked and banged his fist and screamed, It's not fair! Isabel looked at me. I wanted to disappear. Lucky for me, there were only a few other people in the library. One woman came over to see what was happening, but she wasn't impressed. She shook her head, then went back to the stacks where she, where she had been browsing. A man stuck his head out of the out of a reading room and called, Quiet, please! This is a library! But Fudge kept on kicking and screaming and banging his fist. Stop! I hissed. You're making a scene. I can't help it! He cried. You're too old for this. I'm not too old. I'm only five. I would have walked out and left him there except for Isabel. She kneeled beside him. Fudge, she said very softly. Fudge looked at her. His face was splotchy red and his, and his nose was ruddy. Who knows more about Fudge or Farley than you? Nobody. Exactly, she said. So maybe you should write this book yourself. I can't write, he said. My fingers hurt from printing my name. Maybe you can tell the stories to someone else like your brother, and he'll write them down for you. Isabel smiled at me <clears throat> as if she was sharing some secret. I think I smiled back, but I'm not sure. I felt like I was in a dream and everything was happening in slow motion. Fudge sat up. I'll think about it, he said. Isabel handed him a tissue from her pocket, but he doesn't know how to blow his nose. So he just wiped the whole mess across his face. Then he stood, took Isabel's hand, and walked back to the checkout desk with her. That's a nice looking baseball glove, she told him. I call it my Mitzi, Fudge said. And I'm to oil it every day to keep it nice and soft. I wondered if Isabel oiled her skin. I wondered if it felt as soft as it looked. My mind drifted off. I pictured myself in a desert island with Isabel. <sighs> it doesn't matter what I, that I'm years older than you, Peter, she was saying, because you're so mature for your age. Fudge tugged on my hand. Pete, what? 
I'll go tell Dad we're done, okay? I nodded. As soon as Fudge was gone, Isabel said, Did you want to check out that book? Check that out. When I didn't answer, she reached for the book I was holding. Do you have your card? she asked. My card? Yes, your library card. Oh, uh, no, uh, I guess I forgot it. Oh, uh, that's okay. I can uh, hold the book for you until next Saturday. Next Saturday? I asked. I don't know how... <clears throat> I don't know how I got out... Uh, I don't know how I got out of there. My legs were shaking so bad I was feeling kind of weak all over and dizzy too. Fudge came out to Sawyer's Market just as I came out of the library. Dad says he's next in line. He'll meet us back at the car. He stopped for a minute and looked at me. What's wrong, P? Nothing. Why? You look weird. Are you going to puke? No, I'm just a little dizzy. Put your head down, he said. That's what mum always tells us when I'm dizzy. I'm not that kind of dizzy, I said. Oh, <laughs> I'm more like I'm floating. I started to sing. Who can explain it? Who can tell you why? That night, when I got into bed, I stared into my Kreskin's crystal and repeated Isabel's name over and over. I didn't care what her, I didn't care that her friends called her Izzy. To me, she'd always be Isabel. A beautiful name, a name that really fits her. If I were the amazing Kreskin, I'd be able to plan all my dreams. I'd probably be able to transfer thoughts from my head into Isabel's and make her dream about me. I closed my eyes and, be, and concentrated. Isabel. Isabel. But then Fudge came racing into the room. He took a flying leap and landed on my bed. I hid my Kreskin's crystal under my pillow where he couldn't get his hands on it. I'm ready to start my book he announced. I'll say, it, I'll say it and you write it down. Why don't you wait until tomorrow? Then your babysitter can write it down for you. I can't wait, Pete. Why not? Who can explain it? Who can tell you why? He laughed as I handed him. Uh, he ha uh, laughed as he handed me paper and a pencil. There was no way he was going to give up. 
the sooner I started writing, the sooner I'd be able to get back to Isabel. So I took the pencil and said, okay, let's go. Tell me a fudge, he said, by Farley Drexel Hatcher. Chapter One. How Turtle got his name. He waited while I wrote that down. Then he yawned. Oh, oh. Mm. That's it for tonight, Pete. Tomorrow I'll write chapter two. <laughs> I could hardly wait, I told him. He got into his own bed and two seconds later, he was out cold. I took my crystal from underneath my pillow and held it tightly. Isabel, Isabel, tell me an Isabel. I had a dream that night, but it wasn't about Isabel. It was about Sheila Tubman. I woke up feeling really disappointed. The end of that chapter. There you go. She did it. Oh, I'm sorry that you don't understand that I have to learn how to read again. But there was a point that I couldn't even read this well. I was not able to make sense of the sentence. Um, as it were, I couldn't read ahead, if that makes sense. Like while you're reading, you're kind of anticipating from the way it looks and the, the way the there's indentation or this or the other. You're anticipating what or how to say it or, or read it. And so I was having a hard time doing that and which made it harder to understand what I was reading. So it makes sense if you know about how where commas belong or periods belong. And I was, it was all getting all mixed up into one and I, I just couldn't make sense of reading. But I can now. And again, I appreciate those who are understanding and um, uh, patient or whatever of it to know that you need to keep your brain stimulated. Ow! But with that, my brain has had enough for today. So click like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for the upcoming videos of me. Avoiding silly, sometimes being informative, such as telling you when you have a concussion or any kind of brain injury, always do read or whether you do or not, try and read and do things to stimulate your brain. Or sometimes sitting simply having a mukbang with you. Remember to share because sharing is caring and we want to get it out there that I'm the girl who likes to show her you feel like that dangly thing in the back of your throat. So, if that's not of interest to you, be sure to watch the heading because if you see a tongue in it, it's because my mouth will be open. If it's not of interest to you, be sure to watch the myriad of other videos that I have that may be more of interest to you. So with that, I will see you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. You and you and you and you and you and you and my 1,000 plus growing subscribers in the next video.